Hey everybody, welcome back in the shed. I am Troy Shaw, and with me again, as always, is my sidekick, Dave Griffiths. What's new, Dave? Well, <laughs> our soggy spring is, you know, finally over, and we're now beginning summer, and it's beginning to feel a little bit like this in the shed. What do you think, Dave? It, it's one of those days to where it, it works on you a little bit. It, it, it kind of makes you feel like you're at a gig. Yeah. Well, Troy? Well, I'm... You know, can't really complain. I mean, it's been could be worse, I guess. And it's been worse every other year, except yeah. for maybe the, one. The rain is the the problem this year. I think too much freaking rain. But People we're can, not slapping mosquitoes right now. It's, no, we're not. We're we have good, been. We have been. We've I've had got some, some mos- off. It's been but... mosquito hell in the shed. Wait, let's get to the let's get to the show. Well, it's man. another milestone episode. <laughs> this is number fifteen. Enough about the damn mosquitoes. <laughs> God dang it, I'm here to talk. <laughs> <laughs> We brought <laughs> we brought guest number one, David Zaychek, back in the shed. Hi and guys, how's it going, Dave? Man, it's great to be back. We're, we're glad you're back. This is sort of this is number fifteen. Who would have thought that, you know, we started this back in January with with David Zaychek here, and we're just keeping it rolling. Mm-hmm. So, Coincides with my EQ and everything. Yeah, guest they're, fifteen, they're, everything perfect, makes sense. Perfect. So when we, uh, I think David, when we last spoke, uh, you know, you had the Mojo Assassins going, and you know, did I say EQ. Did you say EQ? It's, it should have been IQ, right? IQ? See, I think that proves my point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're winging it here, folks. That's good. Anyway, a lot of things have been happened to you since yeah. Uh, yeah, really since uh, uh, the last time you were here. But one of the things, you know, you're always working on side projects and, and you got things going on in your studio all the time. But mm-hmm. one thing that uh, you've been working on recently is a song that's finished. And it's in the process of getting a music video is in, in the works. Yeah, and hope, been, may, hopefully by the time an incredible job in getting that going. By the time this by the time this gets on on uh, out there on the YouTube land, it'll it'll be out there and we can post that to the page too. But it's yeah. a song called Eddie Song. Yeah, I'm, I really will be looking forward to people's opinions and to hear the song and to and to see what sort of an emotional response that we get well, from. Tell it. us what Eddie Song is all about. Okay. Well, just just like what happens sometimes, you know, uh, a guy will come to a show or something and he'll say, I've been writing some songs, he'll hand you us paper and it'll just be lyrics and, and he'll say, if you can do anything with these, go ahead and you kind of scan over them. But, you know, you're always nice and I, I like to look at stuff and sometimes somebody will give you a cassette or a CD and I'll always listen. But in this case, I got a Facebook message from... Um, a lady named Anita Sutton Chestnut, and Sutton was, you know, her maiden name, and uh, her brother Eddie had written uh, a song, and uh, actually a few songs. He was just sitting around one day casually with a cassette recorder on, played a few songs, and she said, "I'm, I'm sending you this. Could take a listen to this and tell me if, if there might be a song on here that maybe you would consider recording for me in remembrance of Eddie." And then I find out that Eddie had past some years ago and uh, music was a passion of his but he never pursued any of this professionally so I listened to the stuff and I found uh, I thought that one of the songs uh, I, it wasn't completed as none of them were they were just ideas so he sent but you a whole cassette worth of songs he had put I don't know maybe five or six on a cassette she had it because that was one of the few things she had of his that you know she and it just was uh, very special to her so when she sent it to me I made a copy and sent it right back I didn't I didn't want to have it in my possession and have anything happen to it that would just destroy me and her you know yeah sure but um, I listened to it and I said I think there's one tune here that I'd like to uh, work with it and I said I tell you what I'll pretend and it, it won't be hard to do I said I'll just we'll, we'll treat this as if Eddie was here and he was playing the song and I was producing him and I'll edit the song in the way that I think the song should flow and uh, I wound up writing a bridge section but it was just uh, adding in some music that he actually hadn't written but the lyrics he did sure so I so he, he had the lyrics and the melody somewhat down and then you took it and yeah kind of, and I couldn't it. really always tell what the lyrics were but I asked Anita if she knew uh, what they were and she sent me 
what she remembered of the lyrics because she had heard the song so many times. And through that, I was able to decipher some of the things because it was muffled. <laughs> There's old cassette. That's David Zychek, by the way, doing the muffle thing. <laughs> It's not the um, audio quality no, it's a of the excellent a, mic. We that's have right. We have an said. excellent mic. <laughs> anyway, that's how it, that's how it all started. That's right. exactly so what what started. happened to Eddie? Well, Eddie just was. Uh, see, you guys don't know this yet, or you will know it when you see the video. But you'll see pictures of Eddie through his life, and he looks like about it, it, as normal as uh, have as normal a life as most all of us and our friends and families. When I look through his old pictures. We all see things, we're going to all see things that remind us of like what we were doing because it kind of goes through the early 60s into the 70s and 80s and you see the hairstyles change and the stuff they were doing and and you just go, wow, this guy just looked like he was having such a happy, yeah. wonderful life. Yeah. And it goes on through him getting married and having a son and somehow through it all, he, he just got so disenchanted with either the what was happening in his life or whatever and so it was an accidental overdose is what happened and uh, Anita said in one of her messages to me that it was not intentional and she knew this and um, but it was ruled a suicide but uh, you know he was her best friend and brother but I mean when you have that bond and it's more than just Blood. I mean, that's that's one thing, but you don't always like, you know, mm. some people don't always like all of their family. I mean, in this case, they were very, very tight. So this is kind of a remembrance um, yeah. song video. A that tribute. Guys are working on. A tribute. A yeah. tribute to his memory and just the spirit, this this playful guy that, and you see it in the in the pictures as as you watch the video. Yeah, it was it was it was strange when you when you gave me the pictures for the video and I was going through the pictures to see you know his whole life was right there in pictures in mm -hmm. front of me. I didn't mm -hmm. know the guy at all. It was, so it was really odd to see his whole life in front of me and think, "Man, this guy was just a normal guy." And he looked happy. All his pictures had had looked like he was always having a lot of fun and mm -hmm. and, and you know, and now he's gone. But now that you know, the family has this song and this video to help remember him, so I, you know, I think it's I think it's a pretty cool, pretty cool idea. Yeah, and that, and it just kind of goes to show that um, the face we might put on for the guy that's standing there with the camera or the person with the camera may not really reflect. I mean, there's still maybe we don't know what was going on internally. But a lot of times you look up and you smile or, you know, you're at family functions. And so if you're ever going to be having some fun, they're, they're snapping pics uh, through a lot of the things sure. that hopefully were really good times for him. Yeah. How long ago did he OD? How long ago was this? Just a couple, few years ago? No, I don't think it was just within the last few years. I was, I was trying to find that out specifically, but I, I think we're talking, uh, I, I'll have to find out, but, you know. No so sooner his, than his loved ones, ago. obviously, he More. left an impression on them to this yeah. point where they're still wanting to pursue this tribute. Oh, yeah. Well, especially Anita. that They were so close. And she said that she knew that he was kind of troubled and that normally when he was, he would call her in, in the middle of the night and talk to her. And she was always there for him. She said when this one particular time... She knew from something he had said earlier in the day that he, she was kind of expecting a call. She didn't get the call, hmm. right? And that was that was well, when that's it sad. Happened. Yeah, yeah, it is a sad but story. But it's nice to what you're doing, and um, it'll be something that can uh, live on live, forever. Live on forever. Exactly. If there's ever a way to do it, this is the way to do it. It's, and, it's a great uh, way. And this this song uh, and the response back from the family has been so positive and they're so thrilled I mean whatever they want to do with it is up to them but the fact that it can be handed down and you know and his son you know is I think 20 something now wow so yeah. I'd have to think it's had to have been 10 or 15 years ago when this happened because uh, his son was you know pretty young even even in the pictures that shows him yeah. at his oldest age sure. yeah so anyway that's well, the, the, the really song will be out I guess when this gets on our uh, 
website and everything. Mm-hmm. The, the song will be out and the, the video will be out for the whole world to see. So we yeah. hope everybody takes a look at it. I hope so too. Yeah, it, we'll it was, put it on in the shed and, and people can check it out. And, yeah. and it's a great song. I, I just heard it. And, and um, the video. I, I, hope, like I hope I get a chance to perform it at some shows. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. It's a, it's a, it is a really good song, and I enjoyed uh, being part of it. And them letting me in to it was um, really was an honor. So let's talk about the video. The video, uh, for the most part, is pictures of his life. Right. But me and and you went out to out by the airport. Yeah. Like, what's that airport park? Kind of yes, right, right, pretty much in that area. Yeah, we where found it, a nice it, little hill with a blue, pretty sky, and uh, we couldn't have picked a better day. And it, it had it, been raining every other weekend. Yeah, yeah. We wanted oh, to shoot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, it's been so, raining like eighty percent of the time. So yeah, you guys so, did find that small window. We found it, and, and I think it was just uh, it was meant to be. It was, it was, and it, and it was one of those things. Well, working with Troy, you know, ne- you never kind of go, okay, this is taking so long. No, 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 no. spontaneously. Yeah. We were having fun. We were talking about shots, and that's what always happens. You, yeah. you think you're thinking on your feet, and you're doing stuff as you do it. Exactly. He's got his finger on the trigger. He's ready. He's to go. ready to go. I'm rolling when even even when you think I'm not rolling, because that's some of the best stuff. Yeah, that's you know? right. That is. That's that's good, true in the studio too. Yeah. For recording studio. Exactly. Well, I, you know, since the last time you were in the shed, uh, you know, you ran into some medical problems that were pretty serious and put you on the sidelines for a while. I did. Uh, share, share with us what happened. Because I remember I hadn't talked to you in a while. Mm-hmm. And next mm-hmm. thing you know, I'm getting a, a phone call from, from David. And he's like, hey, what's going on? No, what are you doing? Troy's text- <laughs> well, I'm in the hospital. Yeah, I'm Troy's, like- <laughs> yeah, Troy's texting me. He says, Zycheck's in the hospital and it's bad. And I'm like, well, what the heck? What's going on? You, well, I tell you, man, uh, I kind of you just kind of go into shock is what kind of happens. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you that I think and that when I went and did the trip to uh, Europe, this that was three years ago, and then two years ago I went to England. Each each of the times that I went overseas and came back, I felt like digestive issues were happening within me. I mean, I noticed it within seven days of getting back home. Well, with the first trip, I started researching maybe what to do, and I started uh, (coughs) making up my own little concoctions that had to do with, like, apple cider vinegar and probiotics and uh, healthy juices and stuff, and I I was really concentrating on that and doing exercise. And somehow in between three and four months, it normalized, and Mm -hmm. I was fine. Okay, after the England trip... I got back and it started up again within seven days, and I started thinking too well, much fish and chips. <laughs> I wish it would have been too much. I liked that. I got to eat that one time. Uh, I don't know. It. They think it could have been parasitic, you know, in both cases, it just from being there and maybe water or just yeah. who knows what. But anyway, this second time I couldn't remember the order or exactly how I did it. So I started kind of, you know, trying to improvise again, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it just never really went away. So almost a year to the day that I got back, that was last September, I uh, I could barely stand up, and I went to the ER, and uh, they did not get me diagnosed with diverticulitis, which is what it really was, and they just treated me for the symptoms and sent me home. So nothing was cured, nothing was learned, nothing was gained. I just had antibiotics and they said, drink lots of water. So I started drinking lots of water and all that. So next thing I know, I get through Christmas somehow by the grace of God. And then right after Christmas, I start running fevers again, like what was happening prior to going into the ER the first time. And it, I just couldn't make them go away. They just, I couldn't do anything to alleviate it. And finally, in February, uh, I just played. Right, right after the, you were in the shed, I think uh, you ate too much good food over here. <laughs> yeah, it was my ribs, man. Your, your ribs. You know, I put this like anti diverticulitis seasoning on it, but I guess it didn't work. Well, maybe, maybe it kept me from going in a week early. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I like to look at it that way, Dave. <laughs> I like your positive attitude. Yeah. yeah, thank you. But but I just wound up having a uh, an abscess, kind of a rupture, 
and um, they said basically it was uh, very good. Uh, they, they acted like my life was threatened, but because if that had ruptured to the extent of any of that stuff going into my bloodstream, uh, it would have been the fight of my life. But I didn't have, I did not have that happen. Luckily, it was contained within the abscess. So I went in, got catheters put in places we will not talk about on this show, and uh, and then seven days, uh, four days of nothing but morphine and no food and water. That's it. And tubes going in every arm and everything and and I'm just sitting there like going god I wish I had a guitar in my hand I think I could write about five or six records right now well if you're <laughs> you Keith know. Richards you maybe said hey throw me a couple pints of uh, <laughs> o positive or whatever in there while you're at it exactly and said so then, then on the fifth day I think I got ice chips on the sixth day I got to sip some water and on the seventh day I got some solid food yeah. and then they let me out and, uh, so you were in about a week. I was in exactly. I remember a week. when you called me. You were like, "Man, this 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 room is like Star Trek or something. It's just so." Oh my God! Yeah, I was going into these scanning rooms and stuff, and it was like going into uh, being put into the Stargate, and I was going to come out and like some ancient some world where everybody's like Egyptian and flying around, and there's pyramids <laughs> and stuff on another another planet. Is what it looked was like something in between Stargate and Star Trek. So were you yeah. tripping? No, I mean I'm, this is how high tech the scan stuff oh, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You weren't you like, weren't say, hallucinating. Oh was, no, 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 no. I wasn't was hallucinating, just, uh, but you so just were it's you so at, surreal. Uh, were you at Hillcrest or Providence? Uh, I was at Hillcrest. Oh yeah. So bottom line, the the cause of all this is just. Because we used to do it too. Years of gigging. You get you get through with the gig. You go to Whataburger at two in the morning. Yeah. You get a double cheeseburger and French fries, and you just do this for years and years and years. And with it's your case, you know, you go to the studio. Yeah, you park you get, that you on get, top of some tequila shots, and then it's just not you, good. My for you. favorite thing to do was I'm getting out of there at ten o'clock. Most everything's closing. You talking about but from the from the from studio. the studio? Yeah. And there was a Mexican food place that I liked that stayed open till eleven. And if I could get over there in time, they were happy to see me and I could get chips and salsa and I think yeah I'm really doing good I say give me a couple of uh, tacos and some uh, fresh avocado on the side and I tried to drink about three margaritas while I could in yeah. 30 minutes and then go home and relax a bit but then I'm asleep you know within an hour or two that's that's not the way you do it and and as that built up over uh, like a year or a couple of years or as as Troy says it's almost a lifestyle that starts happening for a while yeah yeah it's not good because what happens is you're not eating a high fiber diet and your system is trying to make do on a very low fiber diet and you clog up and you don't know you are and you're not and that, 25 anymore. Yeah. yeah and so that's the start of all your problems and as you clog up, you get infections. It causes infections in those uh, parts of your intestines. And once that that happened to me, it caused a, a kind of an abscess or a rupture. And um, hence, <laughs> hence the swelling and hence yeah. um, emergency room and you know, kind of fighting for uh, hoping you did everything right. S so was this a surprise, or did you have anything going on that led up to? Maybe Fe letting you know that all was not well. Fevers. At the temple of Dave. Fevers. fevers. I was start. I was starting. Fevers were happening, right. and I and you don't and see, you you kind of go well. You know, it's winter time. Everybody around me sniffling Sick, or yeah, got a yeah. flu or something. I, I probably picked up a bug. Yeah. A week later, I'll be doing okay, and then it'll come back, and I go. Well, now it's weird that it came back because did it come back on any particular? Did you do anything? that would trigger it to come back? I mean, no, 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 no. It just, it would just start back up. So bottom line, it's just years and years of just eating not healthy. I, th I think so. Yeah. Uh, and I really always thought I was doing pretty good, but I know now that I look back, I know that I just got, like a lot of people, you get sick of your own cooking, and if I could go out it's, and eat. It's time consuming. Uh, yeah. Well, so yeah, restaurant this, food, yeah, I Yeah, this was that. a life changer. So what, what, was, what advice was. would you give, I mean, like anybody, but musicians too that that do what what I used to do too and you you did forever too is just go get fast food after the gigs over and you know and just fast food and fast food and fast food I mean you've changed your lifestyle totally at this point mm -hmm. I mean t t t tell us what uh, how you've changed your lifestyle yeah what's oh, your uh, regimen now right now it's it's just it's just militant 
on the scheduling of herbs I take with um, hot uh, teas or anything hot that helps put them in my body. The well, I've got some way. herbs over here, so if you need to chow down. Well, just, what you got? Well, I've got some Italian parsley, and I got some oregano, and I got some mint, and I've got some chives. Any, <laughs> some thyme, any, I, any special uh, weed in that diet? <laughs> no, there's no special. Sorry, my, uh, <laughs> my sweet basil died. Oh, dang oh, it. Dang it. Uh, we well, can't smoke that, huh? <laughs> what you want to do, though, is, I mean, for me, I, I do that, and then after my body's had time to absorb it, I usually give it about an hour, and then I do my really big thing, which is uh, I get my juice extractor out, and I do uh, whatever I, I get organic from the store, and now right. it's usually always some organic carrots and organic celery, uh, cucumbers, and I juice those, put them in a blender, I put all of my herbs and vitamins that need to go into this batch and it's about 12 different things plus wow. flaxseed oil plus coconut oil and uh, oregano juice and then you put in if you want to fresh kale or kale powder um, a half of an avocado I like to put in some uh, yogurt because it's a good source of protein for me yes. and uh, I mix all that up and that is one heck of a beverage it's like a big smoothie that just sort of uh, almost tastes good but when you, <laughs> when you think about all the good it's doing you yeah. you feel a little bit better about you can drinking yourself it. into it right? yeah you can <laughs> yeah. it's it's not like it's horrible it's just not what you expect in a smoothie which is usually something very sweet yeah it's kind of like drinking your guacamole. <laughs> well, it sounds like you dodged the bullet. <laughs> I did, man. I'm so fortunate, and man, I mean, it. I would advise anybody just to just to pay attention to their body. Their bodies will let them know. And if you know that you're on a late night schedule all the time, make sure that when you're not, that you counter it everything with with putting good things in your body. So, healthy breakfast, so healthy kind lunch. Of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, do healthy stuff. It's all out. You can eat healthy foods just as easy as you can go eat really bad stuff because all the fast food, it's all been genetically modified. It's yeah. all been growth hormoned. Yeah. You're putting so much bad. And when you take all of that away and you're putting only good stuff in, you'd be surprised. Well, at like the old saying, pack your own shoot, like pack your own smoothie, right? Yeah, you you will pack your own shoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're lucky enough to have a, a friend who's a nurse that's kind of helped you along in this way, the, in, the, in this process. Oh, well, uh, multiple nurses. I'm very, I'm very grateful. I had the help of uh, Charlie Hunt. I had the help of my son Nathan Zajek. Uh, we've, I've got a niece, uh, Andra uh, Simpson, that's uh, a nurse. My sister Jennifer, married to an anesthesiologist. She's an RN. I had all these people everybody helping and they double checking on everything and questioning the doctors and you know and i'm just have so you, you got, got any more of that morphine laying around <laughs> Dave, yeah, more that. important things to talk about <laughs> oh, okay you have helicopter people hanging over you yeah yeah they were the greatest they were the, my, the family it was right there and uh and you need that because see you know you don't just get one doctor anymore they're, they're sort of like a revolving door of people coming and going so yeah just when you think one guy you know one guy the next day another guy comes in and he's he, he doesn't know what's going on he, probably half the time he anyway. looks at the chart and he and what he starts telling you you go well you know that doesn't sound like what the guy yesterday told that's me that's right and yeah. and there'll be so much conflicting information and you're trying to assimilate it and and of course you keep saying why did this happen how do I keep it from happening again and that never was answered for me the only person that has answered that question and has helped me get my health back is my herbalist uh, licensed herbalist of 14 years uh, was the only person that told me that I can beat this I can cure it I can kill this stuff and get it out of my body and never have it mess with me again well um I believe her. You know, none of us are getting any younger, and mortality will get us all in the end, Dave. So, uh, right, right. But I'm not ready to go anymore. Yeah, soon. well, let's cease and desist on this medical malaise mm. talk and get on with the new and improved Dave Zychak. Okay. In fact, okay. Let's get you to play a song. I will. All right. Yeah. Let's do it now. Let's do one, yeah. Okay, uh, when I did finally get out of the hospital, uh, it took me about a week before I could. Um, get back to the studio and where I had all my gear set up and I had my amp there and all my stuff and so I just sat down 
with my guitar and within two weeks I wrote about 30 song ideas I mean they were coming so fast all I could do is just keep a video uh, part of my phone there where I could just hit it each time and, and just grab something because it was like every time my fingers would touch the strings I was playing stuff that I had no idea where it came from it was just brand new fresh stuff and then I started I started writing lyrics and I, I kept a notepad I got I went and bought some so I could just write any time that was hitting me so this is one of the new ideas um, the guys have been telling me uh, Bruce uh, our, our crew chief I guess you'd say uh, Bruce Byers he said it's like he said it's like he came out of this whole experience like rebooted he said it's it's like some switch was reset or something and I, I guess if that's how others are seeing this it could be true um, but anyway I've written new songs we're recording new things and this is one of the demos uh, that I'm working on now what's it called it's called uh, when I get down to you baby or it may be called things be looking up but it's all in there I'm not things sure. may be looking up I'm talking to you baby I'm talking to you baby this is how it starts a little something I wrote I get down to you, baby. Things be looking up for me. Oh yeah. When I get down to you, baby. Things be looking up for me. Woo when I get down to you, baby, we'll be rolling on the floor. You better close the curtains and you better lock the doors. When I get down to down to you baby when I get down to you baby things be looking up for me it's the life of a musician cuz uh well I ain't had no money ever since the gig in Chicago Much a payroll when I get down to you, baby. Things be looking up for me. All right, when I get down to you, baby. Things be looking up for me. Yeah, well, I wanna hold your body in the hot moonlight. I wanna hear you say everything. gets down to you baby things be looking up on me where were y'all's background parts I sounded so good at thank you. sounded so good in rehearsal all right that's that one well Dave you've got <laughs> hold on, hold on. okay Okay. Now well, you refreshed. This has been a really, I mean, uh, crazy year for you. All the things yeah, that have happened. It has been crazy. The shed, the shed is a crazy thing. Just being, uh, you know, you being in the shed, I think, is one of the highlights of the year for you. I'm, I'm assuming. That's one of the things that seems the most normal out of everything. It hasn't really. changed. So, it's, if, if not anything else, it's your little stable home. There you it, go. It, it feels it, that it way. I felt like I was coming home when I came back <laughs> in for my second show here with you guys. But, you, but you've got uh, some new gear at the studio and some new guitars and some new amps and all kinds of... I mean, you got some stuff going on out there. Talk, talk about uh, the, the program you're using to record uh, musicians out there now. Okay. As well, well as your new guitars and amps or whatever else you got going on. Well, the thing thing was uh, I, I didn't have uh, the ability to do much for a couple of weeks when all this hit me because a week was in the hospital and then after I got out of the hospital I had a week where I really couldn't do much I couldn't drive yet uh, I just needed to I needed to try to recuperate I still had a catheter tube in me you know draining all this stuff out so I started researching 
gear. I felt like that uh, this may be a really good time to start. Uh, think I'd been thinking about upgrading some things, so uh, I'd had a good year with a lot of the projects I'd done, and I thought, okay, let let me go ahead and uh, see if I can uh, reinvest a little of this while I have a moment, and I and I'm not doing anything else. I can concentrate on this. So um, I went ahead and got uh, got into an iMac. Um, I, I got everything uh, all updated. I'm running Yosemite. I uh, got uh, Logic uh, Pro 10. And then I, I went with the uh, Universal Audio converters and preamps and uh, their uh, powered plugins. And that all combines with all the other stuff that I already had that I like, that I like to use. So I still use my uh, my Windows based uh, mastering stuff because it's it's so good. So I, I still have that. I'm recording into Logic now, and um, that's just been a big step forward. Uh, I, I've known how to work within software-based uh, digital audio workstations for quite some time. They just they go through so many changes. I mean, where it was ten years ago to five years ago to today, uh, it's just been refinement after refinement. And the biggest thing that you got to keep up with in pro audio is is the converters more than anything more than the mics mics people still use a lot of the mics that were the mics to use 30 years ago yeah yeah I'm, preamps I'm just saying, yeah yeah preamps i mean sure you can always go and get the latest and the greatest but you can go get the workhorses uh still get the old neumanns if you can um but you know the blues brothers traded a car for a microphone they did i think it was for and a green bullet um, <laughs> yes for, right. for the for the blues harp yeah uh, that was one of the first microphones i had as a as a kid when yeah. i was learning was a, a green bullet and we proudly put it on a mic stand and me and two other guys shared it we were all around this horrible looking <laughs> green thing but you know, it's just great so uh, yeah more than anything if you're not keeping up with the converters uh, that's where you're selling yourself short so I went and upgraded all that and uh, did a, another thing I was sort of shooting for was I was hoping my health would be good enough that I, I went into the hospital in I think the 7th of, of March and then by mid-April I had a recording project scheduled with a, uh, a young guitarist out of uh, New Orleans uh, with David Prater producing. Uh, he did Dream Theater and a bunch of hugely iconic records and he was counting on me to know all my new stuff because he, he, was, he was ready to come into the studio and let me do all that work. So I'm frantically learning. Boning up. I'm do exactly. I'm researching, I'm doing all my homework and I'm I'm taking out the stuff we're not going to use anymore and installing the other stuff, making sure it all fits in the studio and it all makes sense that I can get to it all. And sure enough, you know, by day 1 of starting all the tracking, uh despite the fact that there were still bugs to work out, the main things that needed to happen was just good signal coming through. Uh, pristine audio getting recorded. Uh, it performed wonderfully. Uh, I was worried about my health through it. I, I said to David Prater, I said, listen, if, if I can't make it through this, because see, one of the things we haven't covered about my health was that at first, they wanted to operate. And they wanted to take that area, that abscessed, out. But they wouldn't tell me exactly when. They wanted to see if the abscess area would shrink. And that was why they wanted it to drain. So. I said, David, for some reason I have to go and, and they tell me uh, that it's time to do the surgery. I said, well, will, I, will, we, will you wait on me? And they said, absolutely. If it means we have to postpone sessions for a few weeks, we'll, we'll do it. So that took a little bit of a load off my mind. And, uh, but You're luckily able to that heal and, and that, Yeah, that didn't yeah. have to happen. Now they wanted it to happen, but the reason I didn't do it immediately is I thought, well, if there's anything I can do for my own my own sake that will help my health and not have to allow them to cut on me and not be able to guarantee me that the results are going to be good because results being good to me are to say Dave we feel certain we can go in take that area out and reconnect the area you know each side and you'll be fine you'll be you'll be normal they couldn't guarantee me that right so uh, I think we all know what that means. So 
uh, I didn't accept that. I was very depressed. Uh, luckily at that time, uh, a wonderful person named Peggy Jordan came into my life through a, a friend, um, Helen Schaefer, and uh, she said, Dave, you can be healed, and do, if, if they cut you, it's going to take 20 years off your life, even if under the best of circumstances. So you're, you're pretty much a big believer in holistic medicine oh, well, right I am now. now. Yeah, you are now. See, now, I've been a re I haven't been a guy that's ever had big problems and been in the hospital ever for any reason. I had one thing prior in my life, and that was a retinal detachment. had eye surgery uh, ten, 10 years ago, something like that. You had a bug in your ear. Oh, and I had a bug in my ear. Yeah. I did wake up with that. <laughs> I had to go in for that. That, Troy's was, got that one, was weird. Troy's got one in his butt. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, uh, well, I, I wanted to add that in because yeah. all of this was happening within a month after my st hospital yeah. stay. And so I was employing new converters, new operating system, new computer. You were heavily everything. taxed at that point, weren't you? I mean, you were trying to basically get well and then learn build, a whole a new, new way of uh, recording. For some reason, it seemed normal to me. It seemed like I don't have anything better to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, am I going to lay around? I, they said the more active you can be, the more you can do, the better it's going to be to promote your healing. And I just, uh, after a few days after getting out of the hospital, I was all I could stand. And I was back at the studio. So it was I was mixing, and yeah. I was doing a lot of stuff. And I was driving my car, and I was... Uh, I, w I was getting the other new gear. Um, so what's some of the new primary gear, like guitars and amps that you landed? Well, I, I started uh, finding some good deals there. Uh, my friend Rick Turnpaw with Crash Landing uh, turned me on to um, a real high-end handmade amp that is a, a custom-made 45-watt Marshall Plexi. Uh, it's, yeah. It is a, uh, I guess you'd say it's kind of a recreation because uh, he used all the components to make the classic uh, hand-wired model. But the one mod he did was there's a push-pull pot that when it brings in a boost section, that's the uh, JCM 800 preamp when you yes. pull it, and, and that adds it in, which yeah. is, of course, the original 45-watt Marshall didn't have that. So it's a killer amp. Another project that I undertook during this time was I've had this uh, old Fender cabinet. Anybody that's ever been out to the studio, when you walk in the door right to your left was an old beat to shit Fender cab that I used to do all my Chelsea Street pub tours with. Turned out it was a 69 uh, Bandmaster. Not a basement, and but a bandmaster. It was found wound up being a, ba a bandmaster. Okay. I thought I thought it was a basement because it had come from a bass player friend, yeah. and it was loaded with bass speakers. But it was really a bandmaster. So when I got all that figured out, uh, again, my buddy Rick Turnpaw, who was helping me with all this, said at the shop, uh, Kendrick uh, the Amp Place in Kempner, Texas, he said, we've got all the original Tolex, we've got the original grill cloth, we have everything that we need to restore this amp to its former glory. Cool. I said, let's do it. And they're doing a record with me, so we're, we're, we have all kinds of wonderful trade-offs on this. I, I do work for them, they do work for me. Well, next thing you know, you know. You don't you, have to report that to the tax man. That's what's kind of That's nice. right. Yeah. That's, it's yeah. just trade, work, trading off. Barter system mm -hmm. is good. So now I've got this beautifully restored um, 69 uh, Bandmaster cab. Everything looks like it came off the showroom floor. I've got the 45 watt guy. Um, I got. I put, we got put the badass in. head that's feeding that. Yeah, yeah. We have that, and then I, I wound up coming up stumbling across a couple of really good deals on some guitars. And I yeah. just wanted. I, I said, if I'm gonna have this downtime, and I couldn't play any of the shows with Mojo Assassins, I said, when I do come back, I don't want people to go. Oh, bless his heart. He probably shouldn't have. Or you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You don't want anybody to think, you know, maybe you should have thought this over a little bit. And I, and I thought, man, I want to be right, so I'm practicing every day. I said, man, I want my gear to be perfect. So I found a Epiphone Crestwood reissue that I, I couldn't resist. I found a... It's a beauty. A, a, yeah. That's the, that's the guitar, the electric you played in the video. Yeah, it is. Yeah. In the Eddie Sutton, Eddie song video. And then one of my favorites that I got during that time period also was a um, 
a beautiful, um, it's a, made in Mexico, but it's called a Deluxe Roadhouse Strat, and it's got the Texas Specials, uh, it's Rosewood Neck. And That's the blue you, one that you blue, let me pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you really one. dye those pickups? You said you I dyed did. those pickups. Well, yeah, I used some, I used some spray paint and, uh, so I could <laughs> customize it. I couldn't buy covers like that, yeah. so I did. Yeah. 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 I wanted. I like things that are sort of like, have that extra little touch, you know, that yeah, a yeah. person does to it, that nobody else will have it. Right, exactly. Right. So, well, we saw you about a month ago or so at Cinema, and yeah. your tone was just... was. It was a great blew show. us away. It was just yeah. sounded so good. Thank you so very good. much. I had so many compliments that night on the tone, and and man, that's that's what really that that heals a person more than anything is heartfelt compliments. People that have seen you play forever, and they go, man, we we just didn't expect that you'd be back this strong. Yeah, you know, and we were playing impressed. Better we than Troy. We enjoyed hearing you that night. I mean, it was it was a good show. Ronnie wasn't with you that night. No, he couldn't make that. But, that uh, one, it was but, a good um, show. Your filling drummer did a great job. Oh, that that that's uh, Kirby Sodek, and uh, oh, anytime he can sit in, we think he's he's so good. That fits with us so well. At like Ronnie being the rock that he is yeah. on tempo and and everything. Kirby is just that as well. And we love that about him. And uh, Kirby, thank you for all of the help that you've. Well, given Ronnie's us. so incognito in the background. He doesn't. You just. You almost don't even know Ronnie's there. Unless he stands up and starts hollering at you. <laughs> well, he's got those crazy faces he always makes. I like it when he gets up and dances. He came out at the blues festival in Abilene and kind of got the crowd going. Yeah. Oh, it was awesome. It was just. Amazing. He's an entertainer. But I love that because uh, shows should be. Full of joy, full of fun, and you should never, it should never feel like it's so scripted that it gets old. Yeah. It should be from the heart, and it should be uh, so you've got, spontaneous. So you've got a lot of new songs worked up. Uh, mm -hmm. Is the Mojo Assassins going to have a new album anytime yeah. soon? Yeah, the the target date is, to, uh, you know, we do the Seth Chacall show around Christmas every year. Okay. Mojo Assassins did it last year for the first time. And it was just such a success. So we decided uh, that all new material, all 10 more new songs, by Christmas, new record, it will be an unofficial release. We'll have everything there for our, our crowd, for our audience, mm -hmm. to, to pick up on the new stuff. It'll officially come out in January of 2016. But the main thing we're going to do is we're trying to take this thing to the original music level to where when you come see Mojo Assassins now we'll have 20 original songs now we can do two hour show of all, awesome. all Mojo Assassin music and so that's where we're going and we're gonna do it I mean I know we're gonna do it because we've we've kept to every goal we've ever set in, yeah in that's, front of us. that's great and you know I mean as much as people go to see bands and they want to hear the old favorites um, I've always been impressed with bands that say, you know, screw that, man. We're going to play new stuff, and we're going to play it over again, and you're going to, you know, like it. You're going to like it, and when and when we come back and, and do uh, an encore or something, then, then we'll hit them with the... Uh, you, you'll always be able, out of your hip pocket, throw them anything that you had done and to catch them by surprise, because everybody has got a few covers that people go crazy over. Well, you have so many songs in the bank anyways. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, yeah. it's even, the, you know, like when Troy and I have seen you, especially with the videos Troy shot, you've got a ton of original music, and you guys are an original band. I mean, you can do your covers, your pokes outs, and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I think what keeps you fresh is new music. I agree. See, before I had some things separated out, I'd be working, say, with Deborah Jones, and there'd be all this material I was writing right. there. Uh, now that I've kind of been able to switch gears and get back into the Mojo Assassin frame of mind, it, it's good that this band has a lot of new stuff because I, I think, yeah, there's been so much good material written, but it, I need to be doing stuff that I can perform with the guys that I'm here with right now. <clears throat> I can't wait it. on somebody yeah. else to come over here or yeah. whatever. I need to be out there and they need to think and, and see and realize that we're very serious about this. And when you have two records under your belt in two years time, you know, each year you're putting something else out. I, I think and I assume there will be a music video. 
Yes, there will. Yes, there will. <laughs> Yes, there should be. Looks there like a be, payday huh? for Troy. <laughs> yeah, Troy, we gotta get. We have to keep Troy Ronnie? working. Just call Ronnie. Call the money man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Ronnie is uh, pretty happy with the results of uh, the "She's So Sexy" video, and you know, Ronnie, well, he, he was the sexy he, one in the video. He wound up being the star of the yeah, video. He, he I did, thought he, he was his, his personality came through so good. Yeah, that I had it, so much good footage I couldn't even fit it all in in, in the video. You yeah, know? yeah. I agree with you, man. That was so much fun. That was two or three hours over at Cinema Lounge just shooting stuff and having fun with that song. And, uh, oh, my gosh, that we were just having a ball. And and it shows. It was a good night. That's, yeah. That's, were, you, were you there? That's, yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah that's right. I, was I couldn't remember. I was that's the one that told Dave he's got to plug a real guitar that's in. Right, that's right. That's right. standing on top of the bar. Otherwise, You were kind of like my... Uh, director or something. Yeah, well, I was I was the artistic director. That's right. And that's right. With the when Dave was the up there thing. and I said you got to have a got to have a chord coming out of your guitar right. otherwise it's all bogus. Yeah. yeah. That looks so, like yeah. an 80s video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like men without hats. <laughs> that is uh, that's for sure, Bubba. And it was like, "Oh yeah, Dave. Uh-huh. Yeah, good get that. Good call. Thank you." Yeah. Well, we uh, you know, Hope your uh, health just keeps getting better and better, and thank you. Music keeps coming. How many songs do you think you've written in your lifespan? How many songs do you, have you written? I, I don't really know because it's five hundred. Like, no, no, because writing songs to me has always five? been like at the glacial speed. <laughs> you got I mean, five in the can. Well, see, I, back in the airborne days, I wrote yeah, about, about right. half of that yeah. stuff. So may, maybe ten or eleven through those years. Then in the Groove King days, we had maybe ten or eleven songs we wrote. And then I did the Dead Heart Beating record. That was about ten more. But see, I write so slow; it would always be ten years in between something, or five years well, before I'd have another batch. It's quality, not quantity. Right, but that's see that's why the amazing thing out of coming out of the hospital and stuff going just boom, boom, boom. The next thing I know, two weeks, I've got thirty song new ideas, and lyrics are flowing, and I just can't get it down fast enough. That's what's making this record possible yeah. because I was I had so much. You should downtime. do a double album. <clears throat> well, well I, I, you, you know, probably don't want to do it the hard way next time no I don't want to do it the hard <laughs> no, no I don't let's just take it the uh, classic route you know, I, I go agree. to go to Jamaica and smoke a lot of ganja with Keith and then just come up with some riffs and then do it that way but you know no transfusions no uh, drip I agree either yeah on, on no drip no <laughs> no drip unless it's <laughs> 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 Although that morphine probably is not the worst thing yeah. in some ways. It's but. it's so funny, you know, it, it you never feel like you're you're sort of like high, yeah. but at the same time you're not in any pain. Yeah. So you're just kind of sitting there in la la land, really just thinking. Lucid. Yeah. It is yet, kind of like that. Lucid yet relaxed. So um well, uh how about an acoustic song, a okay. new one? Uh, or, I'll see, or I'll one, or let or me see what I can translate into it. I bet I could do a little bit of Eddie. You want to do Eddie? Yeah, I let's bet I could Eddie's. do some of that. Okay, right. okay let's do that. All right, thanks. Here's the uh, preview of Eddie's song that you'll hear and see on our Facebook page and YouTube and all that good stuff. So yeah, here check you go. it out. Help me out. Just if you, if you hear a vocal part, sing along. <laughs> okay. Okay. Am I am I ready? You're ready. All right. Now if I blow it, I'll just start. I'll start over. Right. Now I already forgot the first line. I had it a minute ago. All right, I didn't write this, remember? Yeah. It's all right, I guess Matt. it's time to say goodbye. Thank you. Is that's, that it? That's it, yeah. Okay, here I go again.
my mind Yeah I keep you on my mind So to say the story song. Thanks, Dave. That Woo! Was all right. You're welcome. Of course, that's without uh, all of your awesome lead parts. <laughs> but well, this is the unplugged version. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> all right. David Zacek, we want to thank you again for being in the shed. Uh, we pulled pleasure. another long episode because we could talk to you forever, but we want to thank you again for being here, and I hope everybody checks out Eddie's song when it's on YouTube and on our Facebook page. Yes, please and, do. And let us know what you think. Keep keep checking out the shed for for all the stuff, for all the latest stuff that's happening locally and with our area artists. Hey, thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks, thanks, thanks Dave. Dave. Thank you, Troy. Woo!